In this video, we're going to talk about the intersection of two planes. There are three cases when it comes to the intersection of two planes. In case one, two planes will intersect along a line, infinite points of intersection. This happens anytime two planes are not parallel. In case two, you'll have two parallel planes with no points of intersection. And in case three, you can have two parallel coincident planes with infinite points of intersection. It's not possible for two planes to only intersect at one point. There are either zero points of intersection or an infinite number of points of intersection, whether it be a line or a plane. So here's our method for determining the intersection of two planes. We can make sure the planes are in Cartesian form and compare the normal vectors. If the normal vectors are collinear, i.e. if the first normal is a scalar multiple of the second normal, then one of the following two situations is true. The planes could be parallel and coincident, creating infinite points of intersection. Uh, that would be true if the scalar multiple between the normal vectors of the planes is also the scalar multiple between the constant terms. Perhaps the planes are parallel and non-coincident, creating zero points of intersection. That would be true if the scalar multiple between the normal vectors is not the scalar multiple between the constant terms. And um, it's also possible for the normal vectors to not be collinear and then the two planes would intersect along a line and there would be infinite points of intersection. So what to do if two planes are not parallel? You make a matrix with the Cartesian equations of the planes and then use elementary row operations to get a zero in one of the three left-hand columns of one of the three uh, of one of the rows. Now it doesn't have to be in one of the three left-hand columns. That's just a default that I that I use. Then using that row sub in a value for one of the remaining columns and determine the value for the other column. That actually is a bit of an assumption. It's possible when you do this work that you get two zeros in that final row. If that happens, you can still uh, work your way out of it by um, solving for, the, for that one value that's remaining and then uh, bringing that value up to the top row and then subbing in for one of the values there. So with a little bit of uh, thinking, you can uh, always do this, even if it's not directly on script. Uh, in the fourth step, um, you can sub both those values into the other row to determine a value for the third column. Uh, that would give you a position vector. And the direction vector will be the cross product of the normal vectors of the planes. And you can state the equation of the line in vector form. So let's work on this first question. Um, now, in this first question, we've got the equations of the two planes shown. To be honest with you, the quickest way to do this is just to look at the first plane and say, you know what, if I multiplied the whole thing through by two, I would literally have the equation of the second plane. And so not to overthink it, you can just say you have two uh, parallel coincident planes with infinite points of intersection. Okay, pretty straightforward if you just look at it that way. If you wanna think about it a little bit more, uh, exotically, you can do the following. You can say, well, I know the normal of the first plane is 2, negative 3, 7. I know the normal of the second plane is 4, negative 6, 14. And since the normal vectors are scalar multiples of each other, therefore the planes are either parallel and coincident or parallel and non-coincident. And determine, to determine which, you're going to look at the D values. And when you look at the D values, you see that they maintain the uh, integrity set up by the uh, normal vector. So the uh, second normal vector was two times the first normal vector uh, right there. And similarly, the second D value was two times the first D value. That means you have uh, parallel coincident planes with infinite points of intersection. Now let's look at the second example. In the second example, we have two parallel non-coincident planes with uh, zero points of intersection. Now it could be a little bit obvious if you just know how to look at it. Just multiply that entire second plane by negative 2. You'd get negative 18x plus 2y minus 8z plus 32 equals 0. And if you do that, you'll notice the entire uh, first and second plane are identical, except those d values are different. That tells you you have parallel non-coincident planes. But if you want to think about it a bit more exotically, you can say the first normal vector is 9, negative 1, 4. The second normal vector is negative 18, 2, negative 8. And since the normal vectors are scalar multiples of each other, therefore the planes are either parallel and coincident or parallel and non-coincident. And so to determine which, you can look at the D values. Uh, the first D 
value is negative 16, the second D value is 8. And so we see that uh, normal 2 is equal to negative 2 times normal 1, but D2 is not equal to negative 2 times D1, meaning that the scalar multiples between the two normal vectors doesn't apply to the D values as well, meaning you have planes that are parallel and non-coincident with zero points of intersection. Now, the third example is the one with the longest solution. And this is the case where you've got two planes that are non-parallel that intersect along a line. Well, the first thing we're going to do is look at the two normal vectors. One, uh, The first normal vector is 2, negative 1, 3. And the second one is 3, 2, negative 1. Since those normal vectors are not scalar multiples, therefore the planes are not parallel, and therefore they intersect along a line. So to determine the equation of the line, I like to create a matrix. There are different ways of doing this. So I'm going to restate the planes as uh, by putting the constant term on the other side. Okay. And then creating a matrix. And um, I like to get uh, a lot of times the same value in that uh, X uh, column. So I'm going to multiply the um, second row uh Sorry, I'm going to multiply the first row by 3 and the second row by 2, and then I'm going to subtract. So if I do that, the uh, row 2, negative 1, 3, 6 becomes 6, negative 3, 9, 18, and the row 3, 2, negative 1, negative 18 becomes 6, 4, negative 2, negative 36. I'm then going to subtract here, and I'm going to get 6 minus 6 will be 0, but then negative 3 minus 4 will be negative 7, and 9 uh, minus negative 2 will be 11. Now, at this point, I want to get one solution for x, y, and z. If I can get one solution for x, y, and z, I'll have one point on both planes. I'll use the values for that one point to be the position vector of my line of intersection. And then we'll talk about how to get the direction vector later. But let's get that position vector by finding a point on both. Well, one way to do that is simply to look at that last row. The last row stands for negative 7y plus 11z equaling 54. If I was to let y equal 0, I would get negative... Oh, and by the way, what you have here are two equations with three unknowns. So you're going to have to assign a value to something. So... If I look at that last row as negative 7y plus 11z equals 54, I'm going to assign a value to y of 0. I can say negative 7 times 0 plus 11z equals 54. Uh, I can then solve for z, and I can say z is uh, 11z equals 54, meaning z is 54 over 11. So I've got a y value of 0 and a z value of 54 over 11. I got that from focusing on this last row. I can then take both of those values up to the row above. I can say 6x minus 3y plus 9z equals 18. I can sub in a y value of 0 and a z value of 54 over 11. I can do a little bit of fraction work, and after I do a couple more lines, what I end up with is that uh, 6x is equal to negative 288 over 11, meaning that x is equal to negative 48 over 11. And putting all three of those together, what we've just established is that the point negative 48 elevenths, comma 0, comma 54 elevenths, is a point on the line of intersection. And since that's a point on the line of intersection, we can say that negative 48 elevenths, 0, 54 elevenths could be used as the position vector of our line of intersection. If you do that, it's perfectly acceptable and valid, and you will get the right answer. But what we're going to show you in the next couple of slides is if you use a little bit of number sense, you don't have to have such um, unwieldy numbers as, uh, you know, denominators with, uh, a, sorry, fractions with a denominator of 11. A lot of times you can get integers. So uh, going back to that bottom row, um, 
if you play around with it a little bit, and this is totally up to you, you might be able to, um, this is me explaining that you can, you know, get the values as we just did, and it'll be perfectly uh, satisfactory. But to get a slightly nicer looking equation, what you can do is uh, play around a little bit. If you let y be negative 3, then the bottom row becomes 0x minus 7y plus 11z equals 54, meaning negative 7 times negative 3 plus 11z equals 54. Remember, you're allowed to let any one of them have any value you want. And if you do that, you end up with z actually equaling positive 3 after you do the solving. You get... Um, from here, you get 21 plus 11z equals 54, meaning 11z equals 33, meaning z is 3. So you can take that y value of negative 3 that you randomly assigned and that value of uh, z equaling 3 that you solve for, plug them into the top row, and then uh, it solving for 6x minus 3y plus 9z equals 18, where y is negative 3 and z is 3. And when you do all that, you get x equaling negative 3. And then you're able to say that instead of using the point, uh, instead of using the point um, negative 48 over 11, uh, 0, 0, or sorry, 0, and then uh, 54 over 11 as uh, the basis for your uh, position vector, you can use a much nicer one, uh, negative 3, negative 3, 3, as the basis for your position vector. Again, it's just a matter of personal taste, which you prefer, whichever you prefer to do. But however you find it, just remember that um, if you get negative 3, negative 3, 3 as your position vector, don't go reducing that to negative 1, negative 1, 1, or 1, 1, negative 1. Uh, that is the sort of thing you do with a direction vector, but not with a position vector. Okay, so we've got our position vector. We've spent more than enough time talking about that. Now let's get our direction vector for the line of intersection. And the line of intersection lies on both planes, so therefore it's perpendicular to both normals. So all we have to do is find a vector perpendicular to both normals, and let that be the direction vector of our line of intersection. In other words, we just need to find the cross product of the two normals. So we just have to find out what does 2, negative 1, 3 crossed with 3, 2, negative 1 equal? So we set up our cross product at, like you see here. Uh, negative 1 minus 6, uh, or sorry, positive 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Uh, positive 9 plus 2 is 11 and uh, positive 4 plus 3 is 7. So we see that uh, crossing the two uh, normal vectors uh, gets us the vector negative 5, 11, 7. Uh, we like to begin our direction vectors with a... Uh, um, we like that first non-zero component to be positive, so we'll call it 5, negative 11, negative 7. Let that be our um, direction vector. And so we now have determined that we've got a line with a position vector of negative 3, negative 3, 3, and a direction vector of 5, negative 11, negative 7. And so we can say that the uh, line of intersection between the two planes is the line R equals negative 3, negative 3, uh, 3, plus T times 5, negative 11, negative 7. Or had uh, someone um, not been uh, so, uh, let's say, particular about having integers in their um, position vector, someone else might say that the um, uh, equation of the line is negative 48 elevenths, 0, 54 elevenths, uh, plus uh, t times 5, negative 11, negative 7. Uh, and there would be uh, an infinite number of other position vectors that could be used. So if you get a position vector, uh, but it isn't the same one as the one in the answer, uh, that still might uh, be a correct answer.